So in 7.6, I know problem solving is not your favorite thing in the world to do, but I'm going to teach you some techniques that make it kind of approachable at least. So we'll talk about 7.6, some problem solving, and this is going to involve some proportions as well. If you remember what a proportion is from your pre-algebra days, a proportion is simply an equality of two fractions. So, for instance, are these fractions equal? Yeah. That's a proportion. It's just one fraction equal to another. The nice, excuse me, the nice thing about proportions is that you probably learned something about these. If you cross multiply, you ever heard of cross multiplication? You cross multiply, it's equal. The cross products of a proportion are equal. So for instance, if I cross multiply here and here, I see that 1 times 8, notice how I'm multiplying across, will equal, in fact, 2 times 4. Now while that might not be so surprising to you, do you see that it's equal? 8 times 8 equals 8. This allows us to solve proportions really, really easily. For instance, let's say I didn't have 1 half equals 4 eighths. I had something like... three-eighths equals nine over x. Hey, is that still a proportion? Yeah. Is it a fraction equal to a fraction? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's what a proportion means. So is that still a proportion? Yeah. Sure. Is cross-multiplication still going to work? <coughs> Absolutely. If cross-multiplication works in every proportion, it also has to work in this proportion as well. So what that means is that if you ever get a proportion, it's not really a long, long process to solve this thing, all you have to do is find the cross product. Cross product, product means multiplication, just cross multiply. So if we cross multiply, can you tell me what two things I'm multiplying together first? Three, Three times. Okay, so I need to cross here times here. Equals, what's it going to equal? Where are you getting 72? So just like up here, we could multiply the 1 times the 8, and that had to equal the 2 times the 4. We can do that in this proportion also. We can multiply the 3 times the x. It has to equal the 8 times the 9. This happens with every proportion that you see. Are you guys okay with this object? If you're all right with getting this far. Okay, this is from, from a long time ago. I'm just kind of fresh your memory, and then we're going to build on this in just a bit. Uh, so yeah, we get 3x equals 72. Last step we have to do is just divide. It's a basic equation for us. X equals how much is that going to be? And you know what? You could check your answer. If you plug in 24 right there and you simplify it, you're going to get out 3 eighths. So that's one way to check that. Now, how many of you are with, it, with this, what we just did? Good. Now, we can apply this to some rational expressions. And it's going to be kind of nice. I'm going to leave this one on the board for just a second because um, I want to compare this. Hey, do you have an equal sign? You know what that means? That means that you could, look at the board here real quick, you could do this problem exactly the same way that you did this problem, which would be find 35, multiply both sides by 35, and cancel out the 5 and the 7. Does it, do you see what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Then you distribute. However, is this a proportion? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's one fraction equal to another. Do you see what I'm talking about? That's what makes this a proportion, one fraction equal to another. Is this a proportion? No. Do you see how we have more than one fraction over here on the left-hand side, and more than one fraction over here on the right-hand side? A proportion is one fraction equal to one fraction. So as soon as you have this other garbage kind of messing it up, this x out front and this 2 out back, once you start having that, you can't cross-multiply because, I mean, when you think about it, what are you going to cross-multiply? Just these two? And then you're missing out on that one and that one. You see what I'm saying? So this is kind of a special case of rational equations. It says if you have a proportion, cross-multiply, it makes things a little bit easier. If you forget about cross-multiplication, you just blank it. And you go, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do with proportions. 
Well, you can still solve it that way, right? It just takes a little bit longer. It's not a problem. You just have to find the LCD and do the same exact thing. But if you have a proportion and you want to do a, like a shortcut, I guess, uh, to use the fact that this is a proportion, all you need to do is cross multiply that. Great song. Okay. <laughs> Great song. Sorry. Girls just want to have fun, right? Yeah. Girls <laughs> want to have fun. <laughs> were, were you born in the 80s? No. <laughs> you weren't born in the 80s? No. 90s? 70s? No. <laughs> just kidding. I didn't ask, I just suggested. <laughs> okay, so firstly, do you see the difference between this problem and that problem? Yes. Do you see how this is not a proportion, yet this one is a proportion? Are you sure? A proportion just means one fraction equal to another one. This is really similar to this problem. If we cross multiply, if we cross multiply, we can solve this pretty quickly. So let's do that. If we cross multiply, I am going to get what times what here? 2x two 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 plus 1 times what? Five. Now I'm going to put the 5 out front because that is going to distribute. Do you see what I'm talking about? I can't just put 5 times 2 because we have to also take that to the 1. Equals, same thing happens here, 7 times x minus 3. So we have those parentheses, parentheses signifying that we are going to have to distribute that. But now, look, I mean, we didn't have to find an LCD, did we? You could have done it that way. You could have found 35, multiplied both sides by 35, simplified it, and then distributed just like you did here. You could have done the same thing. But this makes it a little quicker because you don't even have to think about LCD. Not even if you're with me on that. It's kind of nice, right? Does, it, does this work here? Okay, you can't multi cross multiply because you're forgetting about these things. But here, no problem. We'll distribute 10x plus 5 equals 7x minus 21. Okay, let's see if you recognize these things. Should I get everything to one side and zero on the other side, or should I go directly from here? Go directly from there. How? Subtract the minus the seven. seven. Okay, that's our smaller variable, so we're going to get rid of that. Three x plus five equals negative twenty-one. From here, basic equation. Get rid of the constant term first. We'll subtract five. We get 3x equals negative 26. After we divide by 3, x equals negative 26 over 3. Do you feel okay about that problem? <coughs> Would you like to try one on your own? Let's do that. There you go. Try that one. I want you to identify if or if it's a proportion or not. See that you can see that in your head if it's a proportion or not. So be thinking about that. And then solve it. Is that a proportion? Yes. Good. You see that it, there's one fraction equal to one fraction. You see what I'm talking about, right? One fraction equal one fraction. That means that you have two options to solve this, two. You can either find the LCD, LCD in this case would be 18, you with me? And you can multiply both sides by 18 and cross stuff out and then distribute, that's fine. Or you can cut out the part of finding the LCD. And that says if you have a proportion, it's a special case of equations, you can, what's that called? Cross multiply, or you might also hear it said cross product. Find the cross product. Cross product just means cross multiplication. How many people cross multiply? Good. 
Did you use parentheses when you cross multiply that? All right. So here we said it says nine times x minus one. It really doesn't matter which one of these on, is on which side. It does not matter. So if you have this one first, that's fine. It's a, it's an equation. The sides really don't don't matter. Okay. You can have it on either side. And then two times three x plus two. Did you make it that far? Cool. Then we distribute. We all know how to distribute, that's not a problem. We're not going to get everything to one side, we're just going to subtract a smaller variable in this case. We'll get rid of our constant term. Last step is always to divide when I have a coefficient, we're going to get 13 over 3. Would you raise your hand if you got 13 over 3? Fantastic. If you didn't, see where your mistake came. Where I can't have it come from right now is right here when you're cross multiplying. You have to have this set up correctly. That's like the foundation of what we're learning. Everything else is just basic algebra that we've already accomplished in this class. Now, how can we use the idea of proportion in a couple scenarios? The first one is with a word problem. You guys ready for a word problem? No. Yeah. Okay, well, if you don't want to, do you want to have a party instead? Do you want to have a party? Yeah. yeah. Cool, we're going to have a math party. Are you ready? Yeah? Okay, math party. Here we go. So you're having your math party. Awesome. And you're going to go to the store and you're going to buy sodas. So you went to the store already and you bought four two liter bottles of soda. And what it cost you was $5.16. But because it's a math party, it's super cool. <laughs> and so more people want to come. So you have to go back to the store and buy more soda because you know four is not going to be enough. Because you have like at least eight friends coming. <laughs> it's big for a math party, trust me. Uh, so, you have these four two liter sodas and it costs you five dollars and sixteen cents. How much will seven more cost you? How much will seven sodas cost? Now, I've got to tell you, there's several ways to do this problem. Lots of ways. I'm going to show you one way. I'm going to show you the proportion way because that's what we just covered, okay? So here's one option you have for solving this problem. And set up a proportion. Here's what you need to know about proportions. As long as you keep the units grouped together by fraction, then you're going to have your proportion set up correctly, okay? You either group units by fraction, like one fraction is the same type of units, and the other fraction is the same type of units, or numerators and denominators. Things have to match up. So numerators have to match up, you're talking about the same thing, and fractions have to match up, you're talking about the same units. Here's what I mean by that, because that was pretty vague. The units we have in this problem are what? Sodas. Sodas, or bottles. We'll say bottles, okay? We're talking about bottles, and we're talking about, what else? Money. 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 How much money does this stuff cost? So here's what you need to do. You need to group your bottles here and your dollars here, or you can group your bottles here and your dollars here. What you need to also make sure is that you're talking about the same, uh, same comparison on, the, on your fraction. So how you set up your proportion, it kind of it matters. Let's say that we want to set this proportion, and I say I'm going to put my four bottles here. Four bottles. As soon as I do that, my 